now we actually have to get serious about our plans. It's quite a major thing. We are spending the night not on Indy. The waves are definitely getting bigger as we get closer as well. That was probably the worst decision we ever made. Well, that was quite the assault on the senses. Turns out picking Airbnbs is not right and sporty. Hey! Last time on Red Seas, we sailed up to the beautiful islands of San Blas in Panama and tested out some new features on Wayfinder along the way. Everywhere we looked, there were dolphins jumping around us and we tried out some underwater shots with our dolphin cam. When we furled the sails and arrived to our anchorage, we somehow managed to drop anchor right on top of an unmarked, uncharted shipwreck. You can't deny we bring you adventure. That's it, the holiday is over. We have spent far too long just bumming around in paradise and now we actually have to get serious about our plans. So we are heading into the heart of Panama. We are going to Shelter Bay, which is right at the entrance to the Panama Canal. So that's our plan to go through and to get out the other side. There's a bunch of stuff we need to do before that, but that's the place to be to get on with it. Are you ready for a hard dose of reality? I mean, already we're getting it. <laughs> we turned the corner and the wind is like, dead on the nose so we can't turn the engines off and then every so often one rogue wave just comes and rocks us a bit more than we expected. That one wasn't so bad but we had one just a second ago that was it was very steep. <laughs> Wait, this is going to be really cool. I'm looking forward to getting there because it's kind of, it's the first checkpoint? I don't know how to describe it. It's like, it's quite a major thing. It's like a big gateway, yeah. Yeah, the entrance. There's like this big break water we have to go through and I think we have to radio people be allowed to go in. Are we going to have to get all proper? Uh, I think you're going to have to practice your radio voice. <laughs> I can hear it now like a captain. You just have to eat the microphone. <laughs> oh, you sound like you've perfected that. I think that should be your job. All right, so I got a question for you. Has it been having your parents out to visit? Oh, it was so much fun. Like, it's like a big collision of our two lives because our life back home is just so different from what we do now and it's great being able to like share it in video but it's just never quite the same as actually standing on the boat and feeling what it like what it moves like when you're sailing and just being in that space and getting a taste of it so yeah there was a long time in coming covid kind of meant that we've not been able to get home in over two and a half years and they haven't been able to get out here so yeah, I was really nervous before they came out because I just wanted it to go well. But uh, yeah, it was it was difficult saying goodbye. But That's because you're a mummy's girl. I'm such a mummy's girl. I don't even hide that. <laughs> we also maybe didn't do it quite right in that they arrived on the boat and then the first thing we did was smash through waves for three days, four days straight. And uh, I felt really bad. <laughs> just sat there watching, kind of going, I promise you it's not like this all the time. And just hammering into 50 knots. If you're having, top tip, if you're having guests come out to join you on your boat, check the weather and maybe don't <laughs> don't stick to the plan. That was probably the worst decision we ever made. <laughs> they were fine. That's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you keep ridiculing me for this, but uh, given our bigger plans, I decided to get a bit more serious about our fishing situation. Yeah, he says more serious. We've still got our little tiny hand reels. We're not actually getting proper about this at all. We have a limited budget, so we have our we have two Cuban yo-yo hand reels, and uh, I went and bought twelve lures of various colors and sizes. Pacific monster lures is what I'm going to call them. Well, there's, a, there's six Pacific monster lures, and then there's six Pacific medium lures. Yeah, they're still quite chunky. They're chunky, but they're not massive chunky. Like, they're just average chunky. Don't let me down. 
There's always a tiny bit of me who thinks I'm going to throw the entire hand reel in when we do that. Um, well, I was going to say it kind of looked like you were going to that time. You need to name your lure. What are you calling it? Uh, this one is called Night Rider. Kit, Kit Night Rider lure. Because it's red and black and looks really cool. I like it. Go for it, Kit! Come on, Kit! is just starting to set now so we're racing the light to try and get there before it's completely pitch dark but um yeah i have just been surprised by looking out to the horizon and to be honest i kind of forgot that the panama canal is a commercial venture so it's for a whole ton of commercial shipping ships what do you call them shipping ships <laughs> container ships that's the one um yeah these huge huge things are going through the canal every day and we've been preparing to take indie crew and talking to loads of people who have done it so that we can know what to expect and so i had it in my head that yes yes sailboats go through the panama canal and i just forgot that we're going to be crowned in amongst all these huge monsters and now it's quite overwhelming to see them Whee! This is ridiculous. So I just flipped over to RIS, which is like a radar view for boats. And uh, <laughs> there's 294 targets. <laughs> that's ridiculous. And that's the boats that have AIS. So yeah, we've never had that many targets on our AIS ever. Is there actually a route through them or is it just a solid wall of containers? It, it's quite a solid wall. I can actually see Shelter Bay now as well. So we know where we're going. It's like, yeah, it's, it's getting very real. I feel very little. I'm, yeah, Indy, come on, it's okay. It's okay. I'm a bit nervous for her. She might be feeling a bit over, uh, what's the word? Like, I was gonna say overstimulated, but that's probably not quite what I mean. <laughs> Intimidated? Intimidated, that's what I'm after. It's okay. They're big, but they're slow. Christabel, Christabel, this is Indioco, Indioco. We are just reporting our position and requesting access through the breakwater. We've done what we're supposed to do. Well, that was lucky. So it's quite an official location here, as you might imagine, and we're supposed to radio, they're called Christabel signal, um, like an hour before we get here, and we didn't. So. <laughs> So we're less than 30 minutes away, so I just had to very sheepishly go on the radio there and get hold of them and say, I'm really sorry, but we're, we're quite close. Uh, and yeah, I thought it would be like, you know, this is your time slot to enter through the breakwaters to get into the, uh, the area where you want to anchor, but apparently there was like, yeah, there's no traffic, just don't hit anything. So oh, right. um, we're good at that. So long as we keep looking where we're going, we won't hit anything, I hope. Uh, we have we have hit things before, but they've hit us. No, no, they've hit us. That's Big different. Difference. Different thing. And plus, these guys are much bigger, so a lot easier to see. Uh, but yeah, so as long as they don't hit anybody, we're allowed to just like stroll on into the canal, I guess. Very weird. All right, no luck with the fishing line, so we're going to have to fill, fill that away. <laughs> you can tell that we're proper fishermen, we're going to fill the fishing line. Probably a good thing, because I don't think we had time to actually deal with the fish if we caught something as we're like approaching this uh, center of mayhem, as I like to call it. It'd be good if we caught something right at this moment, wouldn't it? It'd be amazing if we caught something right at this moment. No, I was just saying I haven't got any time to actually fillet the fish or deal with it, so... I don't really want to catch anything. I don't think we beat the sunset. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Although it's kind of strange. Whee, big wave. Uh, it's kind of strange because all the boats, of course, have actually got lights, which we're not very used to in the Caribbean sailing we've done. <laughs> the waves are definitely getting bigger as we get closer as well. I can actually see the entrance now, which is... Woo -hoo -hoo! We're getting close! It's crazy, like, yeah, you might not be able to see in the dark, but, like, there's, there's a bridge there, uh, there's a bunch of tankers all over there, but they're not in open water, they're behind the breakwater, so there's a big wall here. Yeah, it's just like a blur of lights on the camera. It's a blur of lights to my eyes too. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so we need to make it to this opening between these two giant walls and then in theory it won't be quite so wavy. 
in theory. Let's hope so. And why are you so smug? I, uh, I just got brownie points from Christabel's signal because we uh, called in in advance and then I just called in again and said, oh, I'm about 10 minutes out. Just checking it's okay to come through the doorway, the breakwater. Did you and, say uh, doorway? I almost did. I had to almost, I was like, we're just entering. I said, we're about 10 minutes away. Is that okay? <laughs> And Is that just that up? Well, it's because we were just overhearing another boat that didn't call in at all and it just entered and she was ripping him apart. <laughs> and I thought, I don't want that. Because <laughs> everyone can hear. Every one of these yeah. lights is another captain or skipper or somebody on a radio station listening and laughing and all. I'm going to be extra nice. Oh, very so, good. Uh, I, I was very polite and I even said, have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> I didn't even sign off properly. I said, oh, we'll be standing by on Channel 1 too. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. And hung up. Of course you did. It's so crazy, you look out the port side of the boat and it's like looking at land. There are so many lights there just because it's container ships, but they're all in a line along the horizon. Or not even the horizon, they're so much closer than that. But uh, yeah, it's like we're driving up between two narrow bits of land in a... Like we're in the canal already! Uh, it's so weird! It's terrifying! It's getting very, very real. So, I hadn't really thought about this, but because this breakwater entry is like a funnel, all these waves are getting bigger and bigger as we get closer, and there's rocks around. So, um, this it's is... as if it's not as much of a challenge, and they're like, How can we make this a little bit more fun? Let's put some rocks in the put way rocks there and make it dark. What could go wrong? So, <laughs> to be fair, that's not the canal's fault, that's that's mainly our timing. I mean, they've got enough lights around, could they not like create some landing ship? Light the whole sea. We're actually cutting in because there is a channel. I just said they could have a landing ship, but there is actually a marked channel, we're just not using it. <laughs> Okay, you probably can't really see it, but this red light here is marking the starboard side of the channel and a green light over this side. So that's what we need to get in between. And actually when you get here and you remember that container ships come through here all the time. It's huge! You've got tons of space! It's fine! It's fine! Okay, we made the final turn to actually go straight in through the breakwater and uh, yeah, the waves are getting bigger. We're surfing in. I think we just topped seven or actually topped eight knots a second ago. At least we're going with them now. But yeah, it's way more comfortable. It's just weird that you can't see them coming. Yeah, true. But so far, our crazy AIS, which is now top 300 targets, <laughs> I don't think we're going to hit anyone. I'd like you to be a little bit more certain than I that, mean, please. I mean, so long as everyone has AIS or lights, <laughs> we're not yeah. going to hit them. There we go. That's more certain, isn't it? <laughs> but it's cool. Once we're through these two giant towers that are all flashing colors, then we can turn right and then we just have to follow the breakwater, I think, to... What did you call the anchorage? The flats. The flats. So, yeah, then we can get to the flats, drop the hook, and then we can steady our nerves <laughs> and go to bed and it'll all be, it'll all be much better. Eee! That was a big wave. Should we be worried that this is where we're anchoring tonight? <laughs> It'll be fine. It's only hazardous for cargo ships. <laughs> Welcome to the neighborhood. It's a little bit busier than I was expecting. <laughs> Not quite the same as the uh, beautiful, pristine, remote Sandland beaches, islands that we're used to. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'll stay here. Do you think they're going to be noisy? Today we are doing something kind of strange. We are spending the night not on Indy, which actually we haven't done in a long time, ever. I don't know if it's ever, a long time. But uh, yeah, so we've been closing everything up, we've been putting everything away, it has been quite a mission. And uh, I just thought you might wanna see the moment that we're doing the one switch that we basically never turn off, which is fans. <laughs> we live with these things switched on and so much so they all burn out. Uh, but given we're not gonna be here, we're gonna switch off the fans, which just feels wrong. It's like a lifeline. Oh, 
it's warm. First night off the boat since we bought her. It's very weird, isn't it? I feel so bad for leaving her. It's like, it's like the first time you leave a child at home, I guess. I don't know, we feel like proud parents, but she'll be okay, won't she? I feel like we should have got her a babysitter. You could ask a boat nearby, I suppose. <laughs> Poor thing, we'll come back for you. We did close all the hatches, right? We did, for sure. Okay, do we turn the gas off? That's what, no people, idea. that's what old people say when they leave the house, don't they? <laughs> they go on holiday and then they get to like Marbella and they say, Did we shut the gas off? paid for our access to the dinghy dock here. Ian's gone to put the bin bags away and then we need to get a taxi to the bus station and eventually after a long convoluted day of travel we should get to the other side of Panama. Panama City, here we go! <laughs> Station, someone just sort of bundled us on and we didn't pay and then it went on for like two and a half hours and we were like are we even still at Panama where are we going but yeah, the whole thing cost like six dollars so that was great it's a bargain although you do have to listen to music that is either rumbly bass or a lady singing at roughly the same frequency as a dentist drill oh my goodness my head is pounding ah. but we made it okay so this is an absolutely huge mall but <laughs> We're being so brave, like, it's, we've been, I don't know, six weeks or something completely off grid. We haven't even seen a store anyway. But before that, we were in the mayhem of Cartagena, and I feel like we've learned our lesson, because I'm not completely panicking at all the people on the ground. Yeah, it was like good training for us. <laughs> yeah. And at least this time, we now, now we learn a little bit more Spanish and can actually communicate, which is helpful. Yeah, well, Last time it was a bit more point and smile and get grumpy faces back at you and go, oh. And now we are fluent. Oh, yeah. Yo hablé español porquito, 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 porquito. We picked up a local SIM card for our phones, did some shopping, and even managed to find time to pose for photos with the wild animals we spotted around the mall, before stumbling across some live music in the bus station. We then headed further downtown into Panama City's Old Town. We got a little bit lost when we mistranslated our Spanish directions, but we eventually found our way to our Airbnb for the night. In true form, I had literally booked the cheapest room in all of Panama, and so for the princely sum of $25, we found ourselves sleeping in the middle of a construction yard. But we were all set to get to the French Embassy in the morning for our very important visa interview before we sailed to Polynesia. We told you all about it, but forgot to turn on the microphones. Sorry. Good morning. So, of course, we are running late, which is surprising given we got woken up this morning at about 8 o'clock with the sound of angle grinders, saws, hammers, and whatever other tools I can imagine just through this wall. Uh, yeah, turns out picking Airbnbs is not brainy sporty. Hey! Anyway, we just need to get packed up now and then make our way down to the embassy, which we checked out last night, is not too far away, it's just around the corner, which is convenient when you have camera in time and you run late every time. So Ian says that I pick Airbnbs badly and while we might not have slept at all, we just power walked and got to the French Embassy in seven minutes. So I think location is everything. So, in a slightly unexpected twist, Brian has been let in, and I've been told to come sit in the park over here, the other side of the street. So, uh, 
I don't know if I'm going to get dragged in second or if she's just going to do all the paperwork. I quite like it when Brian does all the paperwork because I don't understand it all. But uh, yeah, so far we've had English, now we've done Spanish, and I assume that she's in there doing French. So far, so good. All right, bit of a funny update. I actually got called in and uh, the two of us sat there and we waited for our appointment which this lovely lady came out to see us and they won't let us in. They won't let us in. 